Hi everyone, and welcome to FieldPulse 360 Lite. My name is Libby, and today we're going to take a look at an effective workflow in FieldPulse. For this example, we'll be working with an existing customer and turning a job into a project. To get started, we'll navigate to the customer record and create a new job. I'll select Actions and then Create Job. In this situation, let's imagine that the customer is called in and asked for your team to come out and provide an estimate. We're going to use a Field Pulse job template that's already been created for our estimate visits. This allows your team to ensure consistency in your jobs and speed up the process. We'll select Import Template and then select the Evaluation Template. You'll see right away that these job details are populated into the job record. You can always make changes as needed. Next, we'll want to schedule a date and time for this job. You can include a customer arrival window as well, which you can use in your communications to let customers know when to expect you. When you're happy with all of the details you've added to this job record, press Save. Now that the job's been scheduled, let's take a look at the technician experience while completing the job. The first thing your team member will need to do is navigate to timesheets and clock into the job. They can include any tags or notes if they want. Once your team member's clocked in, it's important for them to leave field notes to indicate what they've seen and done while on site. Additionally, if you've assigned any subtasks for your team, make sure that they're completed before they change the job status. I'll navigate to my subtasks, mark them completed, and include any notes as needed. My last subtask is to send the estimate to our customer. We'll mark this in progress and then go ahead and create the estimate while still on site. I'll navigate to the Estimates tab and then press Create Estimate. Here I'll see my customer's details are pre-populated and it'll allow me to add any details I want to provide the customer. When I'm finished with the estimate, I'll press Save and then View My Estimate. When I'm happy with the details I've seen, I'll press email to customer and send this out to get my customer's approval. I can now navigate back to the job and mark send estimate to customer as completed. Now that my job is completed, I'll want to mark it as completed in my custom status workflow. Back in the office, the office manager will be able to take a look at the accepted estimate and navigate to the orders tab. Under this tab, they'll be able to place a purchase order for all of the supplies needed to complete this job. The orders on this page are organized by supplier and can be sent out easily. Now that your purchase order has been created, the office manager can send it out and wait to receive the order. The team can update the status under the purchase order to be aware of what's going on and when the supplies are projected to arrive. Once the purchase order has arrived and the status has been changed to completed, you're ready to visit the customer again and complete the installation. Since we'll be doing another visit on this project, you could create a site visit, but you could also create a project, which is what we'll do in this situation. We prefer projects for larger and longer term work, whereas site visits are maybe just for a quick visit back to check in or measure again. We'll select Actions and then Create Project. Here you'll be able to provide details about the project and this job will automatically be housed under this project. Provide any details you want on this project page and then press Save. Now on the project record, I'll be able to see all of the details as well as view that previous evaluation job visit. I'll now create another job under this project for the installation process. All right, I've created the job and I'm now going to attach one of our new custom forms to this job for my team to complete. I'll navigate to the Forms tab and then select Create New. Here I'll be able to attach one of my existing forms and in this situation, I'll select the Pre-Departure Checklist. This is a great way to use custom forms because it allows your team to check off things and be sure that they're done before leaving the job site. I'm going to save this form to allow my technicians to complete it later on. Once on the job site, I'll want to change the status to in progress and be sure to clock into this second job visit as well. To do so, I'll select timesheets and then clock in. 
A great feature to enhance your workflow experience is the comments section. Here, I can leave comments for the whole team to see or tag specific users to let them know what's going on. Before leaving the job site, I'll be sure to complete the custom form that was attached by my office manager. This is that pre-departure checklist. Here I'll be able to check boxes to be sure that everything has been done on site before leaving and marking the job as completed. I'll simply mark these check boxes to indicate that these things were completed and then provide my name and a signature. When I'm finished with the pre-departure checklist, I'll press save to save the completed form on the job record. Before leaving the job, I'll navigate back to my timesheets to clock out. Now that I'm finished, I'll go ahead and mark the job as completed in the custom status workflow. Just like that, I've completed a job for an evaluation, placed a purchase order, converted the job to a project, and then gone back on site to do an installation. All of these details are collected together and stored in Field Pulse under the project record. Thanks for joining me today to take a look at a workflow walkthrough in Field Pulse. If you're an existing customer and you'd like to see more about this topic or others, join us every two weeks for Field Pulse 360 or check out our recorded sessions in the Help Center. If you're interested in joining Field Pulse, book a demo with us online today. We'll see you next time.